Honourable Lady raises issues about the Ministerial Code, the arbiter of which is the Prime Minister, the work of the Committee on Standards in Public Life, which are matters for them, the role of the Independent Advisor, um, she touches on uh, various reviews that are taking place and matters for the House authorities. And as Mr Speaker has pointed out, these things are not things that I can – it would be appropriate for me to pontificate on, but I'm going to try and answer the uh, general thrust of the uh, uh, accusations the Right Honourable Lady makes today. And I shall speak frankly because I know the Honourable Lady – Right Honourable Lady appreciates that. The charge she makes is that the people she names are somehow on the take. That's the charge she is making here today on the floor of the House. That they have been focused not over the last 16 months on working their socks off to save lives, to get a vaccination programme up and running, to do the things that the public need us to do. But they have unbelievably entered into politics, made sacrifices, overcome the obstacles that she will be aware of to get into this place, not to serve in public life, but to do a mate, or more accurately, a Tory mate, or someone that they vaguely know, or met in a lift once, or perhaps don't know at all, a favour. That is the accusation that she is making today. And I'm afraid this is why the Labour line of attack is not getting traction, well rehearsed though it is. It's not getting traction with the public because it is not plausible. It is based not on fact, but on speculation, innuendo, and smear. Perceived conflicts of interest are not those that the Right Honourable Lady has made up. The public care about scrutiny. They do. They care about accountability and transparency and standards in public life. What they see through, though, is the performance the Right Honourable Lady has given today, which is designed to smear decent colleagues and denigrate British business. I would direct her, Mr Speaker, to the National Audit Office report, which refutes the accusations she's made about MPs, civil servants, business and members of the public, but I'm sure the Right Honourable Lady already knows that. I would suggest to her that an Essex MP is perfectly entitled to forward an offer of help from the Essex Chamber of Commerce to help in a pandemic. MPs do it all the time. It is part of our job, but the Right Honourable Lady already knows this too, and I'm afraid so does everyone else. The urgent question today has more to do with Labour's internal politics and divisions than the conduct of, place, of members of this House and enterprises who have been working to help the NHS and to save lives. The Honourable Lady has made particular accusations today about colleagues, and I just want to make a final point, Mr Speaker, because if you were to take every single MP she's made an allegation uh, about this afternoon, and you were to look at all of the political donations they have received uh, since the pandemic started, since January 2020, if you were to add them all up, if you were to double them, no, Mr Speaker, if you were to quadruple them, you would still just about match what the Honourable Lady herself has received in the same time period. And she should thank her lucky stars that we don't play the same games that she does. She is in a new position. She shadows the um, uh, Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, who now looks after some of the most pressing issues facing this nation. The union of the United Kingdom, devolution, the recovery from this crisis, national security, community resilience, and the British brand around the world. That's what we're focused on. I hope that after her debut today, she will be too, and I wish her well. Yeah.